Welcome to the motherfucking face show. The fucking face show. Taking back America. That's right. That's it is episode back. motherfucking seven, baby. Lucky seven. That's it's what I'm on. talking about. It's on right now. Lucky seven, baby. Taking it back for America. The Cowboys. Yeah. Okay. That's how we're Cowboys. Going. That's why I'm rocking the cowboy hat. The, tr- the, the true pride of America right there. Them, them hardworking boys. That's what we're taking it back Baby, for. baby. It is live and crazy up in here. Crazy things happening today. Today, man, they just they just were doing a vote on uh, this health care, baby. And it was live breaking healthcare. news. Now, by the time you see this, this is going to be all breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting this up tonight. It's going to be broke like... Like two, like two, two, two days, days before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. You're gonna hear be like, oh, this isn't new. Yeah. But it it's new to us, and uh, they passed that. Uh, what the hell was that? The name of that shit now? I I forget. But the uh, amendment to this new massive horrible horrible health care for uh, plan, uh, saying that to ju- just to be sure. Like, they didn't understand the wording in the original bill. They had to write an amendment. And I understand 2,000 pages of gibberish. It's hard to make sense of the thing. So they, they passed an amendment saying that federal dollars will not be used, in other words, for abortion. For abortion. That they will not cover abortion. Because really, with the do-no-harm part of doctoring, it maybe could be thought of philosophically as harm. But whatever. And uh, that is uh, just some of the shit we're going to talk about tonight. We're also going to talk about, uh, uh, we got, the, there's something going to happen, I believe, either in mid-December or they may want to push it back to January now that we were January. I think they're pushing it back to January. The Copenhagen uh, meeting, that the global summit on global uh, warming and whatnot, because the Kyoto Protocols are about to expire. Uh, you know, the Kyoto Protocols was based on bullshit, but... Whatever they let it fly. So we're gonna talk about all we're that. We're talk about healthcare. We're gonna talk about the uh, the Copenhagen thing. We're talking the about Copenhagen cap- thing. global warming or global climate change. I can't even climate do it. change. Commit me. Climate change. I'll yeah. do it. Climate, climate change. change. There, there you, you go. go. And the evidence they. I mean, what evidence? But uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk, we're just gonna talk about science in general and how how there are scientists. And there are believers. And I'm not talking about Christianity, folks. I'm talking about people that just believe um, in the rhetoric. You know, they believe in it like it's a religion. Hey, you know what? In the U.S., atheism, atheism evolutionists, they're all considered paid for uh, religions. Well, maybe not the evolutionist part. I didn't double check that. Don't you guys hate when you erase somebody's phone number? Like, especially like a chick's phone number? And like, oh, no. and like, you gotta try and get it back again. Like, I'm, I'm notorious for that. I remember I dated this one girl, man. She was, she was smoking. We went out one date. She was in one of my classes. All the dudes were drooling over her. And uh, you done deleted her. You know, I just, I lost. It. I physically had the piece of paper with her phone number on it, and uh, I wasn't staying at my house at the time. And you know, just being around and out, and just, I lost it. And uh, I had to ask for it again, and I got it again. But you know. No, that happened to me. She once. didn't pick up. <laughs> cool. that, she gave it to me, but she didn't pick that up. That happened phone. to me. And right now, I'm trying. Like, you trying to get just, ahead? Of I just played the. I just played the. Oh, I got a new cell phone trick. But you ladies do it too. You ladies do it to oh, us all the all fucking, fucking time. time. Oh, I, oh, I got a new cell phone. What's your number? Like when we text you, yeah. or we give you phone calls. Oh, who's this? Who's this, bitch? Bitch, I don't know. I knew you for fucking ten years. Now we hung out. We've done that sex four, five, nine, twenty-five times. And you don't know who this is. Oh, all, that's a, all, all of a sudden. You know, all that's, of a sudden. that's how it is. No, I, I was going to say it happened to me once. I remember one summer. This was back in high school. So it's not like cell phones were the ah, biggest thing. Right there. The number. Bomb. Done deal. Ding, ding, ding. Done deal. In fact, I'm going to put it in my phone right now. Just so you know. Woo, so I got, this, phone. I got yeah! this chick's number at the end of the summer. And I plan to call her. Plan to hang out with her. And uh, what, what happened was, whatever, I put it in my drawer. The next week I go to use it, it's not there. It's gone. Done. I So I, then I, the whole summer goes by. I haven't talked to this chick. She, she just assumes I blew her off. And then I go to talk to her, you know, the, the next year or whatever. And no. Permanent, like, you know, I ran into her. I think this was after when high school was ending, so I ran into her in college once. And permanent, like, fucking boyfriend for the next 20 years. So there you go. There's the write-off on that. But, uh, 
you know, congratulations to uh, our team. Not your team, but it is our team. The New York motherfucking Yankees. Right here, right here. I can't, I can't even get oh, into there it. it. Right there. there. Is, bang. Right there. The Yankee fitted. Twenty. Yankee fitted. Still got, seven. still got the sticker on it. Cause it ain't official Yankee fitted unless you got the sticker on it. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man Fern. My man Fern had a good comment today. He said, he said, you know, all you motherfucking Met fans need to take off, need to take off your fucking stickers and all your bullshit on your windows because there's only one, one real fucking New York team, that's and that's right. the boys in blue pinstripes. That's right, boys in blue pinstripes. New York Met fans, sit down. Sit down, New York Met fans. Sit down. It's all good. Sorry, boys. Maybe next year. Probably not, though. Probably not. No. Probably not. No, we're not hating on you, Mets fans. Let me tell you the difference between Met fans and Yankee fans, okay? If the Yankees don't go in the World Series and the Mets go in the World Series, which <laughs> rare. Rarely ever happens, no, so, no. so we never get called out on no, this. Man. We will root for the Mets. We will. Yankee fans will root for the Mets. If they're in. If they're in. Just rare. But we will root for the Mets because we are true New Yorkers. That's what it's all about right there. Mets will not. Okay? Mets fans will that, do that. You know, New York team, Mets fan will no, never, no, never no, go. In no. fact, the Mets fans are rooting for the Phillies, which are one of their biggest arch rivals. O other okay. than us. Right. Other, other than the New, the New York Yankees, which the New York Yankees, we don't even think about the Mets as a fucking rival because they just, they just. Yeah, the you other team. That's yeah. like, that's like you know, comparing, comparing hockey to soccer. <laughs> yeah, they're similar sports, but not really the same when one is on uh, ice and with sticks and blades and shit. But uh, oh man, that's hilarious. You know. I, I need to talk about something about the attitude of America. Now I might. Everybody said they're heading out to clap. Really? No, it's, it's Saturday. It's 10.30. What, are they going for dinner? Oh, sorry. For, for folks out there, this is our friends. Uh, that's a local bar. And, uh, it's a we, local hole. Yeah, you know, you know, whatever. It's one of the better holes in the area. I get why people go mm -hmm. there from around here who don't want to travel anywhere. Mm -hmm. Fine, whatever. But it's 10.30 on a Saturday night. Yeah. Like ten, they're still ten, serving ten, dinner. dinner. What do you know? What do you say? Families are still mm -hmm. out. You know, we got our commitment mm -hmm. to excellence right, right here, here, man. You know what I'm saying? Like we, but you now we pre game and basically now in the old on. games. If we old days, if I went out this early, I'm getting up all night. I'm probably drunk by twelve. Did yeah. you just edit that out on your own? I do. Or did you just say? I uh, do. I, I do that sometimes. Uh, I. I, sometimes uh, I edit myself. What you meant to say was fucked up. You know what? I got yelled at again for cursing too much on these videos. My dad doesn't see episode five parts of it. That was the worst episode. I'm sorry, father. What episode was episode five? Was that the drunken party episode? That was the drunken party episode. Because I was so showing it to Dan and and uh, we, we were all in the kitchen. Did together. you see my lap dance I got? No, no, not all of the episode. Part did of the episode. You see the six pack at least. No, 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 no
You go to Starbucks in the morning? You go to a store in the morning to buy your coffee? To buy your bacon, egg, and cheese? Does your wife go to the salon and spend $200 to get her hair done? Does she spend 40 bucks on a fucking manicure and a fill? Okay? Are you still enjoying these things? Did you join Did you join the expensive the expensive health club for $150 a month? Instead of the $10 one? Instead of the $10 Planet Fitness? <laughs> I mean, you might not get any results from Planet Fitness. Hey, hey, I am not a fan of Planet Fitness, and, uh, you know... We use it. I, mean, I don't I support Planet Fitness. I don't use but Planet Fitness anymore. I go to a private gym now. Okay. But but for budgeted people and, and beginners, it's a fine That's right. gym. That's right. You know what? Each and every single one of those persons says yes. Why? Because they refuse to compromise lifestyle. That is why. Okay. You know what I told those people? I said, you know what? I said, you don't have a leg to stand on, but I do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Until this bullshit is over, I'm going to give myself my own haircuts. And, okay. and, and, and I have been. All right. I give myself my own fade. You just your fucking name, and I'll do a crew cut, man. I don't give a flying fuck. Nah, nah. Okay. But I have the right when I walk out in public to bitch and complain and moan because I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy those little those little. Now, 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 now. What not to say? I'm going out and get my fucking there's nails There's nothing done. wrong with enjoying the luxuries of life, but you know what but it don't is. Don't come bitching to me about you don't have money to buy a fucking. Old yeah, well, what I'm saying is the old values instilled to us by our parents and our grandparents aren't necessarily used anymore. Like, back in the day, just simple little shit, and, I, and I'm not mm, talking about green and all that bullshit, but uh, I'm talking about common sense shit. Alright, back in the day, common sense shit, you walk out, and I'm guilty of this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this right now, I'm not gonna be a hypocrite and say I'm good. No, I'm not, I'm fucking horrible. But, uh, you know, turning off a light when you walk out of your room, closing your window... If, if it's winter time or some shit after you've taken that shit in the bathroom and you needed to air it out, now you're letting all the heat out of the house <laughs> and uh, your, your, your heat bill is going to go skyrocketing. You know what I mean? For those of you who live in houses as opposed to apartments. You know, turning off a light switch. You know how easy, you know how many people don't do it? Just don't do it anymore? That contributes to the skyrocketing energy costs for your house, not for the country. This is not going to save the country anything. Um... And these supposed energy bulbs really don't save, that they're expensive, they they don't really last longer. It's all bullshit, but whatever. But all I'm saying is just little things, the little values that people used to have only make what you can what you should eat. You know, That's people right. overcook in this country and then throw out the rest. You know, save your leftovers. I have a policy and this goes back to this goes back to early America, okay? When it comes to credit. Cash is king, ladies and gentlemen. If you can't afford it, don't buy you it. simply don't fucking buy it. Okay? Because why? Because in reality, broke people need credit. Yes. Okay? Write that down. Broke people need credit. If you can't afford it, you don't buy it. Because look what happened to the banks. Now, alright, now let me get on this. I was one of the few crazy... I'm talking about back when this tra travesty in... uh and things first broke down back under Bush when they, they rushed back in to uh, create a stimulus, the original one under Bush. Now, I was the only crazy on the fringe motherfucker that said, let them let them die. And people look at me like I'm crazy. You can't let them die. Everything, blah, 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 You can't let them die. And I was talking to a friend of mine, and this guy doesn't lean left. He doesn't, he doesn't have socialist views. But it goes to the heart of the entitlement mentality. And even somebody who's not necessarily far gone, who's more nowhere near that line, had this to say. Because I said to him, if you let, like, Frannie Mae, Freddie Mac, all those companies die, right? They own, like, 75% of whatever it was of the mortgages. And half of those mortgages were in the middle of, you know, a lot of them were going up to foreclosure. This was clogging the market, right? This is what was caused the economic demise of America, right? Okay, if you had let those companies die... The one positive that I saw is huge, people didn't realize, is if the company that you owe money to goes out of business and no one buys them, which the government bought their debts, by the way, but well, I'll get into that in a second. If nobody, if nobody bought those debts from somebody, if nobody bought those vouchers and saying you owe, you know, uh, nine hundred thousand dollars on your home because you were an idiot, you make. 
a hundred thousand a year. Your your wife makes seventy five, so your net is a uh, hundred seventy five, maybe a hundred eighty thousand a year with a bonus or something like that. And you bought something that was literally almost ten times your val what you make in a year. That's not smart thinking, folks. But that's how it was done. People were encouraged to give those type of loans, and then they got fucked with the mortgage rates. But whatever, those people wouldn't owe that money anymore. Nobody who owned a house who who had that would owe money. Literally, all those middle class people that were being strangled by their mortgages, half of those guys would be free. And I said that to him, and not in so many words. I said it much shorter. And his simple response is, "But yeah, but you know what? That's not fair to the other people." who didn't get mortgages from these people. And that goes to the heart of it. See, like I said, he's not a left-leaning guy. He's not. He's more in the center. He's not crazy. He's not on the fringe. But it's business. It's not supposed to be fair. Shit happens in business. You go out of business. You know? P perfect example. People that own time sharing. You get like a 99-year lease or 2,000, you know, 200-year lease. They sell to these people. Yeah. You know, it's like for the, life. For life. And the idea is you could pass it on to your children. But if they go out of business, what the fuck? What good is 99 years if after 20 they went out of business? You're gambling. They're going to be in business for 99 years, and there's a good chance you're not even going to give a shit. You're not going to live that long. After 20 years, you got your money's worth. But you see what I'm saying? It's not fair that they lost. They went out of business, and you, don't, you now you don't have any anything for your investment. But that's exactly what it is. Fear has nothing to do with anything. I'd like to make a stand on what I said this whole thing was from the beginning. The government obviously knew it was coming. They had known for a very long time it was coming. It was simply an economy reset. Yes. Okay? An economy reset. There was a lot of people getting into business that didn't belong in business. They weren't business people. They were just trying to get a, a, a quick, quick buck. A quick buck. Flipping houses. An easy way. Flipping houses. Starting small businesses. You know, they, 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 figure, they figure Joe the plumber down the street could do it. They could do it. Wrong. Okay? Leave the business to the businessman. And what this did was it filtered out the people who didn't belong in business. The people that should be working well, it for other people. Well, it should have. It should have. It and did it. But you know what? In retrospect, it did. Okay? Because there was a lot... Look, take take up the street. Up the street, for example, from where we live, mm -hmm. there's a guy spending 7000 Three years ago, the rent on this building was $7,000. Okay? And I'm sure it was more when he took it over. Now, this building is large enough... It's large enough to be... It's, it's a bar and a restaurant could be a little bit of like a, 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 a party hall type thing. A lot of parking on a major road. So he's paying, say say he's paying 7000 a month. What does this guy do? He puts in hot dogs. Okay? Fr Frank's famous fucking hot dogs. I don't know what the hell the place is called. I've drove by it a million times, but through, through bad signage and bad marketing, I still don't know what the fuck it's called. Okay? Mm -hmm. Hot dogs. How... How much does a hot dog cost you to buy? Two dollars, a dollar? Right, it costs you two dollars. Say it costs him fifty cents bun to pay the guy for being there, to pay the electricity, all the overhead. Say it costs him fifty cents, so he's making a dollar fifty a day. Which is pretty good for a hot dog. Pretty good, dollar fifty. You know, that's, that's a big one. What's that, 150% That's huge. That's 150% That's, that's beautiful. phenomenal. Okay, so a dollar fifty. Now take seven thousand, divide that by... Divide that by seven days. That's a thousand dollars a day. How many hot dogs would you have to sell to make a thousand dollars a day? Yeah, you're looking at five hundred a day. You're not going to do that. <laughs> you're not doing it, buddy. You're looking at more than five hundred a day. Yeah. You're looking at more like seven fifty a day. Seven hundred fifty hot dogs a day. And you put yourself out. Well, here's a here's a now, but you see, but wait, I'm wrong. That that that's seven per week. That's seven thousand per week. Yeah, no, no, but whatever. Whatever, it doesn't yeah, fucking matter. matter. It's unrealistic. He's not a real business person. He shouldn't have gotten a yeah, fucking loan what? to open it, to fucking rent it, what? to even be in business. What? He shouldn't have been there, and they got rid of him. He's out of business. And I'm sorry for his family, and I'm sorry for him for being such a fool, okay, to think that you're going to come into into an area that is enriched with delis and, and diners 
and small restaurants and bars and to think that you were going to make it selling hot dogs and, and a couple of little side items. Well, now, 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 let me explain something, but that's how business is supposed to work. You have an idea, you, you fucking balls out do it, even though maybe you didn't know what the fuck you were doing, you learn from what you do, and hopefully either you succeed or you fail. Either you succeed or you fail. That's how you know. You you don't fucked up. You failed. You may not <laughs> even have up. a bad idea. Maybe the execution was wrong. Here's an example. A friend of mine, I'm not going to list any names, and I try to help him out with this, bought a cell, a cell phone franchise up in Yorktown. Now, the, not, part, not the franchise, but he bought the store, and he inherited the licenses, which was a big fee, but... This wasn't something he was thinking about doing for years. You know, it's something you were t bullshitting. Maybe I'll do this. You know what I mean? And he's a good salesman. On a whim. On a whim. He did it. His butt. Because it fell into his lap, folks. A good storefront in an affluent area. It fell into his lap. Right? And him and his, uh, his family member, you know, his brother-in-law, they went in and uh, they purchased it. That to, between the two of them, they put their savings together. But here was the problem. One, he thought that the client base would transfer to him, and it didn't. They were too used to dealing with the people there. They even assumed you were the same. It didn't really transfer, and there's a reason why they sold it. If it was still profitable, they would have kept it. The truth is, the JV Mall was killing their business. How do we know this? Because he and I used to work in the, in the mall and sell the phones. You know what I mean? So we were the people killing the business. But we figured we weren't doing that anymore. Maybe maybe it wouldn't, wouldn't be so bad. But uh, what what I'm trying to say is, they went in there half cocked. They didn't fully. They it was a good opportunity. They figured they could do it, but they went in there half cocked. They never. They didn't take my advice on two things. One of them was due to lack of funds, and this hurt them. And the other one they tried to later on. And I said, listen, because I, I went in there and helped them out and helped them work for it. And I said, listen. I'll do this, and I, I will tr I will sell the shit out of anybody who walks in, but no one is going to fight harder for your business than you. I'm going to fight hard for your business, but I got paid like, you know, I did it as a favor, and I didn't have a job at the time, so I didn't get paid that well. I was a little late, but other than that, while I was there, I was there to work, but on a strip mall base, you, you can't rely on the clientele that randomly walks in there. You have to do advertising. That was my second point. They only did advertising once or twice. And why? Because they didn't have the funds to, to do it. Because cell phones are very expensive. So I eventually stopped doing it because they really couldn't afford to pay me anyway. They started doing it more because uh, it wasn't enough for them to leave their jobs. You know about this with business. And fine. They didn't do it. It didn't work out for them. So they tried once more. They moved to another area. An area with a, a, a diverging market, basically a market that was ex about to explode for uh, for their carrier. They weren't. They were never allowed up there before due to a pre-existing agreement. They bought that that company out, and now they were good to go. And they were going to be the exclusive dealer. They were going to. It should have been great. They were just off the beaten path, like you could see it from the road, but it wasn't close enough. The location wasn't prime, but they figured it was just slightly prime. That would have been fine. But what didn't they do? You didn't take a place that's like... Let me explain this. It was a better store location, but but it was a strip mall, like, tiny. It had them, like a, a, a Cuban food deli, which was expensive, but I heard it was good. Uh, a post office or, or, or a UPS store, and that was it. That was it. That was it. The only thing there. And they had, again, no money to advertise. And I and I helped them for the transition. I, I worked there a few a few weeks until uh, they could take over. But no money to advertise. What clientele are they going to get? Th these people they are lucky to see at that one location ten people a day t to do business there, and maybe the deli. But they were expensive. Maybe they did maybe they did twenty a day, but net for the place maybe 50 people a day went there and nobody walked into that cell phone store because they didn't have the signage up yet with no advertisement you must market yourself exactly but they went out of business now I'm not saying I wanted them I wanted them to succeed but they just didn't have the funds to do it right their idea wasn't bad folks 
their execution was was off because they didn't have the money. And that's my point. Execution needs to be there. There's three things. There's three things you gotta know about business. Number one, you must be passionate. Okay, you must be passionate. You gotta give it a hundred percent. You gotta give it your all from the very first thought that goes into your head. There must be no other thoughts. Okay. Exactly. You you got to go into it balls to the wall. Number two, marketing. When this shit went down, before everything happened with the economy, I said at the very start, I said he go out markets the next man will be the last man standing. Which is very there true. There are several businesses in our area that are very, very highly successful, growing in this economy, okay? Because of because marketing. Because of marketing, because they drop they dropped a hundred grand, a hundred and fifty grand, whatever it may be, into marketing. They they did it. They took the sacrifice. In, in these times, in these times, you must increase marketing. Okay, you must increase your marketing efforts. This is not a time to fucking save money and back off of marketing. You must increase marketing in this time because you have to outdo the guy down the street. Well, uh, exactly. You have to. You must, or you will die. And that is what has happened to many, many people out there. And there's there's so many horror stories out there. Now, and last but not least, well, I'm drawing a blank on my last but not well, least. Well, I'll, I'll just give a quick example of this other one. All right, this, I'm into comics. You guys know that from previous uh, episodes. So, you know, I, I used to go to this one comic shop, whatever. I didn't like it that much. One day, me and my buddy hear a radio advertisement. Uh, and then later I saw a TV commercial for it, like a cheap little commercial about this other comic shop, uh, almost as far away as the one I was going to, just in a different direction, and by where my other friend lived, more or less, right? So, because of that one radio advertisement, and I think I saw one TV commercial for it, me and my buddy checked them out. Now we go, we're loyal customers, and between the two of us, may drop upwards to $200 per visit, right? I, you know, I dropped like 40, comics have been getting more expensive, so I started with 20, then it went to 40, and now I'm at 60 with the same amount of books, but that's just inflation for you folks. But what I'm saying is between the two of us, we're big fish. We go there, we make his day, you know, he, me and my buddy go in there, we're spending almost $200 per visit. He knows when he sees us that it's going to be good because now we're going to make up a sale. And he's a very nice guy. He keeps full records now because he, he could afford the nice computer system. He expanded his store, and he's doing well in this economy. Why? Excellent customer service. He at, he spent money when he didn't have to to advertise, and he get, and he just expanded his base, and he's doing well right now because that's what you got to do. Excellent customer service and marketing, and that's what he has. You know, he's the, he was the type of guy. Is One time I went there, uh, well, actually one time we went there, my buddy bought a comic there, the computer mischarged him and charged him for the variant. So instead of getting like a three dollar comment, he paid twenty. We get to the car, he's like, you know, I didn't buy eighty dollars worth of stuff. I could have sworn it was like sixty. It doesn't make sense. We looked at the receipt, he went back. This guy didn't just refund him the the difference, he refunded the whole comic and gave it to him for free. That's the type of guy he is. You know, and that's that could be your other point. Customer service. Once they're in there, treat them like you want to be treated when you walk into a place. You know, I, I got a comment about that whole customer service thing. Out in out in the West Coast, mm -hmm. uh, there's a place called In and Out Burger. Everybody knows who In and Out is, man. Uh, it's good shit out there. If you ever get a chance, you drive by In and Out, make sure you stop. You know, they make everything fresh right on site. Cut potatoes, everything fried. So. I go in there and I, I ordered like whatever my meal was and a soda and then on top of that I wanted a, a shake. So you know, I, I order and they hand me the cup and, and, and they hand me the shake. But they don't hand me a cup for the soda and I'm like, Oh I'm like, Well, I wanted a soda and on the thing it just said what they had done was they, they substituted the shake for the soda instead of adding the, the shake, shake on. Yeah. And I said to the kid behind the counter, I said, Oh, I said, Well I wanted a shake on top of my soda. He goes, oh, hey, no problem. He hands me the cup right away. And I, I said, well, you know, how much do you want? He goes, no, it's on the house. Don't worry about it. We're sorry. And there you go. That's customer service right there. That, that makes you loyal. That, pe that keeps people coming back. Now, my third, my third thing I want to talk about is there is no get-rich-quick schemes. 
No. Okay. There is no such thing as get rich quick. You see it on TV. You see it on the internet. Wherever the hell you see it, it's bullshit. You get the emails. You fucking delete them because they they don't work. I have a buddy who's tried every single one of them out there. Okay. He spent thousands of dollars on these fucking things, and you know what he has? You know what he has? Nothing. He's got nothing to prove for it. it. You know, when it comes to that, I mean, the guy's got a job, and you know, he works and stuff. But there is no such thing as a get rich quick scheme. Okay, write that down. Okay, because it's a fact. It is a fact. The the you you know, can, no. whatever you see on there, whether whether it, it's attached to a high class name like Google, okay, or or eBay or or eBay or whatever it is, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It worked for the first couple of guys, okay, and then and it got it, saturated. And then it got saturated. Just know that. Yeah. It, now now let's let's break off real fast from business because we we only got like twenty minutes. Speaking left. of saturation. Yes, yes. Let's, let's talk about climate change. All right. Talk a little climate bit about climate change, change and the Ooh. bogusness. The, the fucking complete other shit. Listen, folks, I don't know if you've uh, watched some shit, but uh, the science is in on global warming. It's bullshit. Uh, it's natural what's, what's occurring it, what's, it, what's the guy's name? Lord Montauk? Okay. Lord Montauk, he's been on Glenn Beck. He's been in How... What is it? How Lindsay, 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 Lindsay Report. Report. Okay. Yeah, and Check him out. Okay, he's, he's the he's foremost expert on this subject. He's on the he's on the internet. He was just on Glenn Beck tonight, actually talking. And uh, yeah, and uh, th well, basically, we you know, if you pay attention, and uh, this guy cites all the sources. You know what, folks? I'm gonna say this out there. If you've never watched, I understand it's from a Christian point of view. So maybe that might offend some of you out there who aren't a Christian, but grow some fucking balls. That's all I gotta say about that. Just grow some balls, cause he still spits truth, even though it may be from a Christian perspective. His website is amazing. He puts out a little half an hour TV show. He just spits knowledge. How and it, how Lindsay? I mean, how forward? Yeah. You go to his site. You go to then you click on each subject he talked about on that episode. He gives you his sources. Video links to Nobody all his sources. Does Nobody, Nobody does that. Okay. No. That's he, how truthful this man is. All right. And again. It, Christian point of view, so he will relate it to Christianity as he feels it applies. That's fine. You understand you're watching a Christian show before you sit down and watch it. But that, side note. But basically, um, he, this guy went in section by section. There's a, under one of the sources, you, you watch his whole speech on it. And he'll go in and break down for you um, all the sites uh, that's going around. And basically disproving global warming. Let me let me get on a couple of things. If you take a, a, a temperature graph uh, of of uh, the warming and cooling rates of the Earth, and you take a, a graph on solar activity, meaning spikes and rises in solar activity, so, so and people are like, oh yeah, the fucking sun, guys. The sun could be responsible for warming the Earth. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. I thought that's what the big ball of fire in the center of our fucking solar system was for. But maybe I'm wrong. And they match up identical. When there's a spike in solar activity, all of a sudden the Earth gets hot. And let's go even further. Now let's. There's another source because the sun rays come in and they warm up the oceans. The oceans what keep our temperature. And and uh. The jet streams is what regulates our temperature on the planet for what part of the planet is warm and what part of the planet is cold, other than what season they're in, right? This helps regulate it. And uh, you, I don't know if you saw the movie uh, Day, uh, Day After Tomorrow, they're talking about how it could shift and then radical cooling and global warming goes across global cooling, and it's crazy. But the truth is that when it gets, it, it does shift slightly and then goes back. So it gets warm again, and then cold again, and it moves in a cycle, along with the cycle of the sun, because everything does have to do with each other, folks. It all interlocks. Now, one of the big theories with global war warming, and Lord Uncton try, uh, talked about this, was um, the, the theory is that we're gonna co we cause a lot of water vapor and a lot of CO2 gases to build in the atmosphere. That in the upper atmosphere... And if you think about this, this sounds retarded, but, but let's 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 go with it. The, the theory is that it, it creates all these dense gases on the top layer of our atmosphere, which prevents the rays that bounce it through. Somehow they get... This is what I never yeah. understood. How they How, get somehow they got... They're good enough to get through, but when they hit the earth and bounce back, they're not no, strong enough to get, get back out. out. But all right. 
We can buy that. Oh, the sun. It's only, it's only love when you're sticking it in, ladies but, and gentlemen. But not it's love. only love. <laughs> but not when, when you pull, pull it out. out. Oh, God. <laughs> but, but that's the theory. Now, uh, somebody just did a study. It came out not too long ago, and he so sorted, uh, sourced it out. I'm not going to do that because I didn't follow it that close. But basically, it says what you might think. If the reason why they were on the top in the first place, right, these gases, was because of how light they were. It's vapor. 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 They have to be light, the lightest thing on the atmosphere to be the less affected by gravity. Right. right. So, if they're correct, those vapors do get more ga heavy. Right. They get and heavy. more dense. Right, because they That's build true. up, they build up, they get more dense and heavy. But what happens? They're not as light as they used to be. That means they fall back down. So they don't, they don't stop. And once oh, they fall back oh, down oh, to the level oh, oh. where heavy gases are normally, which are clouds, they disperse a little, and then all, and, and then, what do we have? Oh, it goes right rain. through. Rain. 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 Oh, rain. rain. Oh, is that how rain forms? Oh, the water cycle? Oh, shit. The water cycle. There you go. And, and it's not enough because they're right. When it bounces back, the further out it gets, the weaker it gets. But, but when it would bounce right back, it's still pretty strong. Strong enough to burst right through there. So, no, none of that so shit is true. Focus. Okay. Let's talk about the polar bears. Polar we all. Bears. Polar bear. Oh, you know, everything's happening to... to po po let's kill the polar bears. Oh, polar it's getting bears. warm. The polar bears are going to die. Gonna Except die. for it got a little warmer, and they're like, yo, you know what? I'm not as tired. Let's get it on, bitches. Let's get it, let's get it on. They multiplied by two to five times. Two to five times right. since the seventies. And that, and you gotta realize the kind big of bogus, kind of bogus, bogus there, Al Gore. Yeah, kind of yeah, bogus. Yeah. And Don't tell me to my face. Don't tell me to my face, you bitch. Oh no! Did you see? You didn't see this. Take your suit off. But bitch. you know Take what? Let's, let's pause for a second. Fucking for an assertion it. of a clip. If I find it again, folks, uh, pause. Hello, yeah. my name is Phelan McAleer, I'm from Greener Horizon Films, documentaries. Um, the British High Court in London found an inconvenient truth had nine significant errors uh, in it. Um, given this film has been shown in schools to children, do you accept those nine significant errors? I know you say that it's funded by deniers, that court case, but a judge in the British High Court, after a lengthy hearing, found there were nine significant errors. This has been shown to children. Have you, do you accept those findings, and have you done anything to correct those errors? Well, I'm not going to go through uh, uh, all of those. Uh, the, the, the ruling was in favor of the movie, by the way, and the ruling was in favor of showing the movie in schools. And that, that's, that's really uh, the, the, the bottom line on that. There's been such a long discussion of each one of those uh, specific things. Um, one of them, for example, was that polar bears, if I remember correctly, it's been a long time ago, that polar bears really aren't endangered. Well, the polar bears didn't get that word, <laughs> so... Uh... Well, the number of polar bears have increased, actually, and are increasing. You don't think they're endangered, do you? The, the number of polar bears have increased. Do you think they're endangered? Uh, the number of polar bears have increased. <laughs> I mean, All right, if, uh, the, uh, if the number of polar bears inc increase, surely they're not endangered. Put the and, word and polar the judge, bear. A judge no, did no, have a lengthy it. hearing. We have to move on. No, but no, I mean, a pre a Vice, yeah, President Gore, uh, Vice President Gore hasn't... Vice, Vice President... Ha We're not doing a debate here. No, this is a question. He hasn't answered the question. Vice we President have Gore ten hasn't minutes answered. left for these yes, people Yes, but I would appreciate his answer to the court. All right, and what you might have just seen, if I found it, if I didn't, fuck, fuck, man, I'm bad at it, was, uh... Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Al Gore was at a press conference. This guy who put out a, a, a documentary, basically, that, you know, saying how much full of shit this guy is, and uh, you know, he he asked him a simple, the question was on the polar bear issue. He said, "How are they in? You know, uh, what? How do you explain the fact that the polar bear population is increasing?" And Al Gore's response is, "What are you saying? They're not. They're not endangered." And he, you know, the guy didn't want to really say that, but he was like, no, 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 but they're increasing. Oh, well, they're not in danger. He said, and finally the guy says, no, if they're increasing in numbers, they're not endangered because they're increasing. Ooh, and I'm getting a phone call, but uh, no more responsibility. But uh, <laughs> but you know, and then the guy, and then the, the he's like, uh, but the you know the vice president never answered my question, and they pulled that guy off, and they yanked off his, they cut his mic, and it was horrible. So if I found it, you aired it, you'll see it. But uh, this is the type of stuff because they don't want to debate it with logic. But let me let me go real fast into the believer scenario. 
people with science, whether it's evolution, which is a different subject I'm not going to get into, whether it's global warming, global cooling from before that, and now global climate change, these guys, they they claim to be scientists, and they are, but they're scientists with blinders on, you know? Like a horse. They're blinders. They can only see the path that's been laid out for them. They can't see that if you look over here, you realize that the, the, you're not looking at the right you're not getting the whole picture you're only you're only gonna get part of the fucking picture and that's what's going on because they believe let me explain something about scientists they're very slow to accept something as a fact but once they all agree it's a fact it's nearly impossible even if you're beating them in the head with the new information that says the old information was false and here's why to accept that they've been wrong they're horrible with this throughout history. Really, really, really bad at it. Um, and that's the way they've always been. So as soon as they accept something, they accepted evolution was a fact. It was disproved like 20 years later. Do you know they knew evolution was bullshit in the 1800s? And all their evidence was false? Fine. But it, that's just a little fun fact. All I'm saying is once they figure out something's wrong, after they accepted it as a fact, it's almost impossible for them to change it otherwise because they've all become believers and it's ideology versus real science. They never check it. They don't follow through with the scientific method. They don't recheck old shit because they assume the original shit was right. Sometimes technology dictates that you may think something is right, but now you have new technology to show you, to test for things you couldn't have tested for 300 years ago or something like that. You know what I'm trying to say? And that's what happens. These people believe it like it's a religion because it is their religion. It's their substitute Christianity, their substitute Muslim, their, you know, their substitute Buddhism. You know what I'm saying? It's their view because there's a real arrogant view, and it's the arrogance of man. See, if there's no God, then we're the gods. You get how that works, folks? Then we don't have to answer to anybody. If we don't have to answer to anybody, and if what we do doesn't matter, then we could do anything, because there's no consequences for our actions. Which is the core belief of Satanism. Yes, it is. But that's that's the current view of society. There are no consequences for actions. You know, there... And, and, and there's no moral responsibility. responsibility. Bam. And uh, real fast, real fast, let's get into healthcare. We got like eight minutes left, and we're going we're gonna to skim it, because we've done it before. We're going to skim it. We we did a whole episode of healthcare before. The house is voting on the healthcare plan, the new healthcare plan, right now. And uh, learn some shit, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's expected to pass because they can, because they blame the Republicans. Oh, you fucking Republicans trying to stop us. The Democrats basically going to pass it because they outweigh the vote in the house. They own it. Now the Republicans can put up an opposition, but it's more like your nagging wife who doesn't control your pocketbook, trying to tell you not to buy a car. You control the pocketbook, you can overwrite her. She may divorce you afterwards. But consequences, folks. And they're trying to tell you, they're trying to convince you that it's yours and it's your right. Now, I agree, people should be treated fairly in hospitals, regardless of if they have insurance or not. That I get. Um, and I'm not, now I'm going to put this out there. I'm, a I'm not a hypocrite, but I am a hypocrite. I do have government health care. Oh, that's crazy, New York. I got I got the Medicaid or whatever it is. I'm white. I don't have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty I much how it I applied for it. I don't have it. That's pretty much how it happened. Yeah. But the, he got the racist Spanish guy. I got the cool Spanish guy. I'm Spanish myself. But he would have given it to... Had Cody gotten that guy and we've been reversed, we've, we've been both been sitting here with health care. That's right. Because the, the cool Spanish guy would have just given it to you. Right. Yeah, all right. See, well, I'm going to let you guys in on a little something. On a little secret here. Okay? that I learned from the Ecuadorians. I don't know if they were citizens or not. Doesn't even matter, but they're, they're gaming on the system. They're gaming on the system. Almost every every major city or, or large town has some sort of like a, a healthcare facility that you can go to. Clinic. Ladies and gentlemen. And we are for free clinics. Support your free clinics. That's right. It's a good cause. It's twenty-five dollars to see a doctor for a doctor visit. Now you can go in as a walk-in, or you can make an appointment. These are the same doctors you see at Mount Sinai Hospital. The same doctors you see at Vassar Hospital. These they the, do. These are the same doctors that rotate. 
That's right. They rotate. Okay. Because they, they, it's just like a, it's just like a lawyer doing pro bono work. There you go. That's exactly okay. what it so is. So you go in, you see a doctor. It's twenty five dollars to see a doctor. That was twenty five dollars. And they're gonna send you to Walmart, and we all know that Walmart gives you the generic versions of the drugs unless it's something new. Four dollars. Four dollars. Four dollar prescription plan. Walmart has hundreds of the, these these drugs on four dollars. Xanax, Vicodin, you name it. They give you the generics, which are the same exact things without the big names. Everybody knows the difference between generics and the same things without the big names. Right. Exactly. So, you so, so this is how this is how you survive, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you survive. Now, I'm not talking about hospital stay or anything that's like that. A that's a different. That's it. And everybody gets emergency medical care. Everybody can qualify for emergency Medicare. Yes, you can. Now, let me explain something to people that don't understand. They think they can't afford it, but they don't realize that it's all about priorities and values, folks. We have friends, and uh, we're not going to get into names, but we have friends out there. They, they bought houses. They bought cars. cars. And but but for whatever reason they can't they couldn't uh, they couldn't uh, their job didn't offer them health care and they and they saying they can't they can't get health care they can't get health care they can't afford but the health care that they tried to go through was the, the government, government plan that which, he has which which is only now let me explain something folks I am I have a part time job I'm poor I'm by definition poor I don't make over fifty thousand a year or thirty thousand a year whatever it is. I make under thirty thousand a year. I'm gonna say I'm gonna put that out there. Con I am considered poor because I am considered poor. I qualify for this insurance because realistically I can't afford it. If I didn't eat and I didn't, and I t took my whole paycheck and just got health care, I still couldn't pay for health care. That's why I qualify for health care. That's how it works. That's how it works. And with children, people understand. The children should qualify in this state, and in New York, children are covered. Okay, uh, certain states have tried to do the same, and it's almost bankrupt them. I mean, hell, New York's economy isn't great. Let me put it to that: healthcare will bankrupt you, but that's how it is. But people that own houses and and cars, if you didn't own the house, if you rented, maybe you could afford healthcare. If you didn't own a brand new car, maybe you could afford healthcare. Because I, I'll tell you this. All you have to do is go to an insurance company, say, I have money, I need coverage. That's it. They'll tell you, okay, you have a thousand dollars a month, this is the level of coverage you can get. And what the Republicans try to do with open up competition, meaning maybe in this area there's I have three choices. Now if you open up competition, I might have twenty choices. Guess what? Driving the price down. down. Because now these three guys are aware of what they offer. And they're competitive within themselves, but they're still expensive. Capitalism. Now with 20 choices, I can go to Bob's discount medical insurance, and and doesn't matter as long as people take them, they're good. But with a government-run health care plan, which is socialism, there is no choices. Let me explain something. There is no choices. Doctors aren't greedy. I I, I uh, work at a hospital. When I first started working at the hospital, they laid off an entire wing. 400 people lost their job in this economy. Why? Because Medicaid didn't pay what they owed. They were billed by these company, by this hospital. They were promised money, and the state government couldn't afford to pay them on these procedures. And you know what's going to happen? With and this, that's going to go with down. This government health care plan. Medicaid is going to be cut even further, so you can kiss it nearly goodbye. And Medicaid okay. doesn't. Let me explain this. Medicaid has a lot of flaws. Medicaid does deny people more than anybody else. I don't care. If you take all the insurance companies, put them in one lot, then take Medicaid and Medicare, and how much they deny, Medicare denies way more people. Now, I like my plan. It's the best one I've, I've had out of the insurance that I paid for that I did on basic coverage. I am pretty freaking awesome because the government knows knows wh who to send me to the cheapest motherfuckers possible. Right. But, see, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, is, is, Doctors, we got like a minute left. Do we got like a minute left? Yeah. All right. Let me just say. This, let me just say this real quick. Number one, if you have a, you have a personal health care plan, okay, and you don't choose the other health care plan, you're going to be taxed forty percent. And that's forty percent, ladies and gentlemen. Forty percent. Think about that. That's the end of our show. Three, two, two one. one. Bang.